Brexit may have induced a race to the bottom among European financial centres scrambling to attract London-based businesses that are looking for a new home. What would this mean for the European Union's financial rules and its harmonisation efforts? To help me discuss this, I'm joined by Justin Pugsley, editor of Global Risk Regulator, a sister publication of The Banker. Justin, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. So let's start first with the details of what these European financial centres may be engaging with. What kind of flexibility to these European rules may be willing to offer to businesses? Well, I mean, there's clearly a scramble going on because you've got uh, financial institutions um, in London looking for new EU headquarters. So obviously, you know, this is a real bonanza. So you've got centres like Dublin, Paris, Luxembourg, Frankfurt, all bidding to host these companies, these financial firms. And that, that's basically what's transpired from this is that the European sort of supranational regulators like the Commission, European Securities and Markets Authority and the European Central Bank have been sounding warnings about, you know, don't be too aggressive about bidding to get this business. Um, so there's been suggestions that, you know, they've been willing to relax um, authorization processes um, pro promising lighter supervision and things like that. However, when I've spoken to people in the market, even speaking to the European Commission uh, and the ECB, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of that, other than maybe regulators doing the conference circuit, talking about, you know, the advantages of um, being, you know, moving to their country. Okay. Um, but this is clearly already sounding alarm bells. And yes. what could this mean then? Because uh, we, could, we can easily see two ways that this can lead to. So either regulatory arbitrage yeah. or potentially an even stronger push from Brussels towards harmonisation. Which way do you think we're going to go? Well, there's definitely a push towards harmonisation. I think this maybe is what underpins these stories because, I mean, I've spoken to the European Commission and they said that they've not seen any evidence of people doing that. I've also spoken to lawyers who said the same thing. Yes, there is quite aggressive bidding, so you know some centres are, 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 are promising faster processes or setting up an English language centre and so on. That, that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the issue here is probably around national options and discretions. So, you know, take the Capital Requirements Directive, there are about 150 of them. Now, these are designed to um, sort of reflect the different banking and legal regimes in, in different countries. So, you know, a financial centre could say, well, we've got this, you know, we've got this rather good discretion which might suit your firm. Um, and also you've got things like MIFID, the Markets and Financial Instruments Directive, which you know, has been implemented differently across the EU. So you know, France is a bit more relaxed with asset managers and say the UK in some respects. Um, so you know, what the ECB is concerned about and ESMA is that you know, this will lead to a really uneven playing field. And, it's, and this tension has been here for years, by the way, but it's only because of Brexit and this move of firms that this is sort of really coming to the surface. So this has really highlighted the complexity yeah. of, uh, of the financial regulatory space in, in Europe and, and the difficulty in harmonising it and in, um, uh, integrating it into local uh, rules, yeah. country rules. Um, so how fast do you think a push this may become then? I think this is where you're, you're seeing the, the, the whole uh, area going towards to um, yeah. in the next year. Well, okay, think of Capital Markets Union because that, that, that's, a, you know, that's really become a big priority now for the European Commission. It was kind of languishing before, but Brexit is, is really giving mm -hmm. it a push. Um, they're, they're aiming to get that implemented by 2019. They also want to deepen the European Banking Union as well. So I think now there's going to be a really big push from the Commission particularly. Um, it's reviewing the role of the European Securities Authorities uh, which is ESMA, European Banking Authority, and the one that deals with uh, insurance, EOPA. Um, I suspect they're going to get more powers um, to, to do pan-EU supervision. And, and their mission is to drive regulatory convergence anyway. So I think, with, along with ECB, they're going to really try and chisel away at all those national options and discretions. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to be easy because, you know, they're political um, and, you know, countries will try and defend them because you know they want to look after national champions and, and keep themselves competitive as a financial centre. 
So Brexit may lead to uh, an EU which is uh, much more um, compact when it comes yes. to financial regulations. I, I, I think that is definitely a train of direction. And, you know, you've got countries like France and Ireland who are behind that as well. So, you know, they've got member states, but it's not just the Commission here. And I suspect the European Parliament um, very much supports that as well. Very well. Thank you, Justin. Pleasure.